So let me share the screen so you can see my slides, right? Yes. Perfect. So uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Jacopo, for the introduction. So today and tomorrow, we will be talking uh, about uh, nonlinear dynamics. So let me first show you how I have organized all the material for today's and tomorrow's tutorial, and then we can get started right away. So I will start with a very um, simple and brief introduction, just to remind ourselves what are nonlinear systems, uh, why are they interesting, and I will also give you a few examples with a particular focus, of course, in uh, ecology. Then I will show you how, uh, for example, by using stream plots, we can actually understand the general behavior of the solutions of a nonlinear system without actually solving the equations uh, analytically. Then we will be talking about stability in the linear systems. In particular, I will show you the two main tools that can be used to uh, study the stability of equilibria in linear differential equations. Of course, throughout all these topics, I will show you plenty of examples. We will also do a couple of uh, very simple exercises. So we, we will get a practical sense of, we will get our hands, let's say, on, uh, on the topic and uh, um, so we, we can better understand what we're doing. Now, as Jacopo already told you, these uh, tutorials are, I mean, they shouldn't be just simple lectures, but they are meant to be a moment of uh, discussion. So please, at any time, uh, if what I'm saying is not clear or if you have questions, please ask me. So if everything is clear for now, we can get started. So what we would like to do in general is, let's say, solve or understand something about uh, nonlinear differential equations. Now, by nonlinear differential equations, we basically mean an equation or a system of equations that look like this. So, where this function f here is uh, any nonlinear function. So, these, for example, will all, will all be uh, simple cases. They can be in one dimension or in two dimensions here, where this function is uh, nonlinear. So, these are all simple examples of uh, nonlinear system. And they, I mean, they are interesting and we want to be able to understand something about them, basically because any interesting uh, phenomenon in nature is uh, described by a nonlinear differential equation. Let's see some example. Uh, one of the, I think, uh, most simple but also overlooked physical system that is actually described by a nonlinear differential equation is the pendulum. Now, you may be used from introductory physics courses to see um, this equation with sine of theta approximated by just theta, but that is only uh, an approximation of the true, let's say, pendulum equation, which is actually a nonlinear one. Then another important case where, uh, uh, of nonlinear system are fluids, because fluid dynamics is regulated by Navier-Stokes equations, which, in generally are, uh, which generally are nonlinear equations. For example, this is the equation for an incompressible fluid where u here is the velocity field of the, of, the, of the fluid. And this term, for example, we can see that uh, is not linear. So linear. So again, fluid are an important example of nonlinear system. Now I want to uh, introduce two examples that we will consider over and over again in these tutorials and that are actually relevant um, for ecology. The first one is uh, the logistic growth equation. You may already have seen it uh, somewhere uh, at some point in your life, but basically this equation simply describes the growth of a population X in a system with, let's say, a limited amount of resources. Now, of course, I'm going to uh, show you this in more detail in a few slides, but basically you see that if we didn't have this term here, this equation would basically uh, be a simple linear differential equation. And so we would have that the population X here is growing exponentially uh, without limit. But this term, as I will show you later, basically makes it possible, makes it impossible, sorry, for the uh, population to be larger than K. So this system has a maximum population, let's say, that can be sustained. The other system that is uh, relevant for ecology is uh, lotka voltaire are lotka voltaire equations. Again, this is a very uh, famous system, which basically describes the dynamics of the population of a prey, which is x here, and a predator, which is y here. And these parameters basically measure the interactions between these two populations. You see that in both cases here and here, the functions that define our differential equations are nonlinear. So these are indeed uh, nonlinear systems. OK, so. Um, 
what we would like to do generally with uh, in a, let's say an ideal world with nonlinear differential equations will be to solve them analytically but unfortunately this is almost never possible because we don't have like a theorem or a general recipe let's say that can give us a direction into how to solve any given nonlinear system so it is reasonable to ask ourselves uh, if and how we can understand something about nonlinear systems without actually uh, solving the equations. Now, what people generally want to do with nonlinear systems is uh, studying their equilibria. Now, I'm going to introduce definitions that probably are very familiar to you, but I just want to first refresh their meaning, and then I also want to uh, build a small vocabulary on uh, nonlinear system that can be useful uh, throughout this work. Now, in general, if we have a general nonlinear system like this, uh, a given point x star is said to be an equilibrium of the system if the function that defines our equations here is equal to zero. You see that this means basically that the equilibria of a system are the points where the variable doesn't change because if x is equal to x star, then f is zero, x dot is zero, and so the variable will not change uh, once it is equal to, uh, to this equilibrium here. Now, what people generally want to do with uh, equilibria is understand if they are stable or unstable. So we need some notion of stability and instability uh, to study them. So let me introduce some very informal definitions of stability and instability. I will make these definitions a little bit more formal in a few slides, but I just want you to get uh, an intuitive idea of what I mean. So. Uh, in general, an equilibrium is said to be stable if any solution of the system that starts with an initial condition that is close enough to the equilibrium will always remain close to x star. Now, of course, this notion of closeness, close enough, is anything but uh, rigorous, but still, I just want you to, uh, to get the intuitive idea for now. On the other hand, an equilibrium is said to be unstable if it is not stable. So if we can find solutions of uh, the equations that start close to the equilibrium and eventually go away from it. Now, in light of, uh, of these concepts, we can basically reformulate our initial question as follows. So can we understand something about the stability of uh, the equilibrium of a nonlinear system without actually solving uh, its equation? The answer, of course, is yes. There are several ways, the several tools that we can use. And one of the simplest one, but also quite effective that we can use in this direction is drawing stream plots, which basically means drawing the trajectories of the system in the state space. Now, the, I think the easiest way to understand how stream plots work is to see how uh, they are done practically. So let's start with uh, a simple example. So assume we are given this differential equation, which is of course nonlinear, because this function here is a simple cubic function. So let's draw it. This function basically lo looks like this. And so we can see very easily, we can also factorize the expression in this way. So we can see very easily that the system has three equilibria in this case, which are the three points where this function is equal to zero. In particular, in this case, are minus one, zero, and two. Now, the basic principle behind drawing stream plots is the following. Uh, now, wherever this function f here is positive, x dot will be positive. So uh, the solutions that start from point where f is positive will be characterized by the fact that x is increasing. So for example, if we consider this interval here between minus one and zero, in this interval, the function f is positive. So any solution that starts uh, from these points here will be characterized by the fact that x is increasing. And the same will happen, uh, for example, in this interval here. On the other hand, wherever f is negative, x dot will be negative, and so the solutions uh, will be characterized by the fact that x is decreasing. So if we start from any point in this interval here, we will have that the solutions uh, actually go towards the left, and the same uh, here. So in the end, what we can draw are these trajectories. So this is the stream plot of uh, our system. And so you can see that by doing this very, very simple drawing, we can already guess which equilibria are stable and which are unstable. In particular, we can guess that this equilibrium here is unstable because you see that if we take any initial condition that is slightly larger than two, we will have that this solution basically increases without limit and something similar happen, happens here if we take 
an initial condition that is slightly uh, lower than minus one. On the contrary, we see that solutions here are actually going towards uh, the equilibrium in zero. And so we can guess that this equilibrium is um, stable. Let's see another. Is everything clear here? OK. But so, I think it's a good time uh, if you have a question, something yeah, exactly. to ask a question. So uh, please remember that this uh, is, uh, is uh, a tutorial. So uh, this is really meant to be to have everyone being on the same page on uh, on the topic. So um, if something is unclear, don't hesitate to ask questions. OK? OK. So let's see basically the same thing applied into a different case. So let's consider this equation, x dot equal cosine of x. So in this case, we know that our function here looks like this. So we will have basically an equilibrium in every uh, positive and negative odd uh, multiple of pi halves, because these are the, the zeros of the cosine function. Then if we apply the same principle as before, we will have, for example, that in this interval here, in this interval here and in this interval here, the function is positive. So the solutions will go in towards the right. On the other hand, in this interval here and in this interval here, the function is negative, And so the solutions will be going towards the left. So in the end, the stream plot that we can draw of this, this system looks like this. So you did see that in this case, we basically have an uh, alternation of stable and unstable equilibria in our state space, which of course, is the x-axis here because this uh, system is a unidimensional system. We only have we only have x as a variable. So let me now uh, show you basically how we can use these stream plots in cases that are ecologically relevant. So the first thing I want to show you is the stream plot of the uh, logistic equation. Now, actually, this is uh, one of the few lucky cases where we can actually. Uh, solve an equation uh, analytically. So I hope that with this example, it will be clear uh, that, I mean, comparing what we see with the stream plots with what we see with the analytical solution, that stream plots can actually help us understand the general behavior of the solution of a nonlinear system. So first thing, let's try to, uh, I mean, let me show you how uh, these equations can be solved analytically. So let me write here in the whiteboard the uh, equation. Okay. So I, to solve this equation, I'm going to use some uh, physicists tricks. So if you are a mathematician, uh, I apologize because you will probably be horrified by what I'm going to do. But basically, uh, what we can do in this case is we can separate the variables. So we bring everything that depends on x on one side, and everything that depends on t on the other one. I'm sorry, this whiteboard is a little bit slow, but I hope you can see uh, everything. So uh, once we have done this, now this fraction here, we can actually decompose it into two terms. So we can write this uh, as dx over x uh, plus dx over k over 1 minus x over k. So you see that if we simply add these two fractions, fractions we get exactly this. So we have this equation, but these are very simple terms to integrate because, for example, this one will be the logarithm of x plus a constant. This one will be minus the logarithm of 1 minus x over k plus a constant. And this here will be simply rt plus a constant. So in the end, we can rewrite everything as logarithm of x over 1 minus x over k equal to rt plus c, which basically means that x over 1 minus x over k is the exponential of rt plus c. Now, of course, we have to determine the value of this constant, so we can evaluate this expression for t equal to 0. And by simply rearranging basically the expression that we get in this way, the final analytical solution of the uh, logistic equation looks like this. So this is the analytical solution of uh, this equation, where x0 is, of course, the initial condition on x. Now, you see that here we have an exponential with a negative exponent, because remember that both r and k are positive parameters. 
So as, t, uh, as time passes, so as t becomes uh, larger and larger, well, we can neglect basically this term here. Then x0 and x0 cancel out. And so we can see that uh, the solutions of this equation tend towards the value k. The only case in, in which uh, this doesn't happen is when the initial condition is zero, because you see that in this case, uh, is, if x0 is equal to zero, the numerator, is there a Hello. question? Yes? Yes, yes. So could you explain what is r and x and k? Yes, of course. Uh, basically, the biological meaning of r is the growth rate of the species. You see that if we didn't have, let, let me write it down, if we yeah. didn't have uh, the quadratic term, so if we had only this equation here, the solution of this equation would simply be uh, sorry, would simply be constant times RT, would simply be an exponential. So in this case, we, we would have like a population growing exponentially. The biological meaning, on the other hand, of this other parameter, and it's going to be clear in a few seconds, but basically this is the maximum population that the system can sustain. Because let me draw basically how the solutions, uh, the solutions uh, are. So for example, if we start from x0 equal to 0, as I uh, just told you, basically the solution is constantly equal to 0. So this is a trivial case because it basically describes a system with no population. Something similar happens also when x0 is equal to k, because you see that here uh, we would have k minus k, so this is always equal to 0. And again, this and this cancel out. But then, if we take any initial condition between these two values, this function basically behaves like this. So we have uh, a population that grows, and the growth, the initial growth here is actually an exponential growth, because you see that when x is very small, we, we could neglect it. So at the very beginning, the, the growth is well, well approximated by uh, an exponential. But eventually, this population saturates towards k. On the other hand, if the initial condition is larger than k, what happens is that the population quickly decays towards k. So basically, the, the meaning of this parameter is the maximum population that the system can sustain. Because basically, the idea behind the logistic growth equation is that uh, the population here, this could be microorganism, could be animals, could be anything, but it is in, uh, in an environment with limited uh, resources. So at, at a certain point, the system will reach a population that is not sustainable anymore. And so x cannot grow larger than k. And even, you see, even if uh, x is driven to a value larger than k, then it quickly decays back to k. Does that ans answer your question? I mean, was I clear enough? Yeah, yeah, that's clear. Okay. Please request to all, please don't put the message regarding the VCs, okay? Sorry? Okay, it's correct, correct, it's okay. Okay, so um, the fact that k here is basically the maximum population of the system is also why is th this parameter is called the carrying capacity uh, of the system. So now we know how the, uh, these solutions work. In particular, if we look at what is happening in the state space, so along this axis, you see that these solutions here basically are going towards k and in the same way, these solutions here are going down towards k. So let's see if we could understand this general behavior already from the stream plot. So again, this is our equation. The function, uh, the nonlinear function that describes the system now is simply a parabola. And so we can draw it. Now, uh, of course, here I am not considering the negative part of the state space simply because this uh, variable here represents a population. So it makes sense only when it is non-negative. So this is the aspect of this function. So we see immediately that we have two equilibria indeed, zero and k. So now let's apply uh, what I've shown you before for stream plots. In this interval here, the function f is positive. And so the solutions, the trajectories of the solutions will go from zero to k. On the other hand, in this other part of the state space, the function here is negative. And so the solutions will move uh, again towards k. So in the end, the stream plot of the system is like this, from which, I mean, we can also guess that this equilibrium here uh, is unstable because the solutions are moving away from it, while this equilibrium here is uh, stable. 
So you see that if we look at what is happening in the state space, we are actually uh, seeing recovering the same behavior. So of course, by using the stream plots, we can't say, for example, how quickly these trajectories are moving or the exact way in which this is happening. We couldn't guess, for example, that there is an exponential, like I show, I've shown you before, that regulates the speed uh, of this motion. But again, without even trying to find the analytical solutions, we can see how uh, the solutions are moving in general. Now, if everything is clear here, so if there are no um, further questions? There is a question. Um, sorry, okay. can I ask? Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, what does it mean of unstable and also stable? By unstable and uh, unstable, in, in this case, I am meaning the very informal definition that I have given a few uh, slides ago. So unstable in this case means that the solution are moving away from the equilibrium. Because you see that in this case, if you pick any uh, initial condition that is slightly larger than zero, the solutions will eventually go away from this equilibrium. While on the other hand, stable equilibrium means that the solutions are remaining close to the equilibrium. So in this particular case, uh, for K, for example, we have that the solutions are actually going towards the equilibrium, but this is not necessary for the equilibrium to be stable. So this is a particular case of uh, stable equilibrium. In general, uh -huh. For an equilibrium to be stable, we just need that the solutions remain close to it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, no problem. So, uh, I hope it is clear with this example that, uh, I mean, what we, are, we uh, are seeing with the stream plot makes actually sense if we compare it to the analytical solution. Uh, can I ask? Uh... Yes, of course. Uh, so ecologically, it means uh, that the K is yes. the point where it uh, achieves the equilibrium, right? So there's yeah. no uh, resource limitation, like we can say, for the growth. No, the resource limitation is, I mean, is in the fact that this population is not growing exponentially. If we had a system where an unlimited amount, where, where we had an unlimited amount of resources, Basically, we, here we, we would have only an exponential growth with a fixed uh, growth rate, basically. Okay, okay. What happens in this case is that K is the, I mean, is the maximum population that can be sustained by the system, in, meaning that if for any reason the population grows larger than K, there are no enough resources to sustain that population. And so you see that eventually the population will go back to K. Okay. So in this case, is the, the, the resource, in this sense, there is resource limitation. Okay. Okay. So uh, what we can do now is basically apply the same thing. Uh, so we can try to draw the stream plots uh, in the case of the Lotka Volterra system. So our equations in this case are this, and this is our state space. Again, here I am considering only positive values for X and Y because they represent populations. So it doesn't really make sense to look at the other quadrants uh, of the state space here. So if we look at these equations here, we can find uh, very easily two equilibria, which are the origin, oh, sorry, the origin and this uh, non-trivial equilibrium. Now the origin uh, is very easy to see why this is an equilibrium because if X and Y are both equal to zero, then both uh, X dot and Y dot here are zero. The other uh, non-trivial equilibrium is very easy. Let me show you. For example, we have that x dot is equal to alpha x minus beta xy. So if we want this to be equal to zero, we can rewrite this as x times alpha minus beta y equal to zero. So if x is not zero, we simply have that uh, y is alpha over beta. If we uh, do this exact thing with the other equation, we, we get that the uh, equilibrium in the end is this point here. Now, let's try to, uh, to draw the stream plot. The first thing that we can do is uh, see how the system behaves on this axis here. So for example, if we take an initial condition where x0 is equal to zero, so we start from the y-axis here, you uh, see that- There is a, there is a yeah. question, Leonardo. Yeah, sorry. Am I 
Am I having problem with the audio or not? So yeah, I, I think I can hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Uh, what if what if the care is not constant? So what do we do? What if the I'm, care I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you well. There is a little bit of background noise. I, I, I don't know. I think that the question was Sorry? The question was what the carrying capacity is not constant? Uh, what if the carrying capacity here? Uh, uh, okay, you mean here? Uh, well, in this case, we would have basically a different system. K could be a, a function of x, if you, if you want, or a function of uh, any other uh, variable. But I mean, it, it would simply be uh, a different system. We would require, uh, I mean, a different. It would have a different stream plot, so we can use the same tools, but it would be simply a, a different system. Okay. So, uh, where were we? Okay, so if we uh, take an initial condition, for example, in, that is on the y-axis here for the log table Terra system, you see that our system reduced to uh, this. So the solutions basically will be uh, decaying exponentially towards the origin. Remember that all these parameters here are positive, so minus gamma y is negative. On the other hand, if we take any solution that starts uh, on the x-axis, so if y0 is equal to 0, we can write our system like this, and so the solutions will be growing exponentially on the x-axis. So the first thing that we can draw about the stream plots uh, are these trajectories here. And this, uh, again, notice that it would be enough for us to guess that the origin here is an unstable equilibrium. Because you see that along this direction, we have solutions that uh, actually go away from the equilibrium. So by definition, this equilibrium here would be unstable. So let's try to see what happens, sorry, what happens uh, in the rest of the state space. What we can do is see exactly when the uh, components of this function here are positive and when they are not. So for example, if we look uh, at when x dot is positive, we have, uh, again, as I've shown you before, that this must be positive. Now, we are not on the uh, y-axis, so x is different than 0. And in the end, we get that y must be lower than alpha or beta. So we can divide the state space into two regions, one where x dot is negative and one where x dot is positive. Similarly, if we look at where y dot is positive, we get that this is true when x is larger than gamma over de delta. So in the end, we can basically divide our state space in four regions. Uh, and for each of these one, we know uh, that x dot and y dot is either positive on, or negative. This basically means that we are able to see the general direction, let's say, towards which the uh, solutions are pointing. For example, here, if x dot and y dot is, uh, are both positive, it means that the solution is growing both in x and in y. So in general, the solution is pointing in this direction. And, the true, and this is true also for these other areas. So you, th you see that we haven't even tried to solve the equations, but we can guess already that the solutions of the Lotka Volterra system oscillate around this uh, equilibrium, of course. We don't know exactly how this happens, but we know that this is happening. Is that clear? Are there questions? Okay. So I hope I hope it is. Sorry, I I, I was muted. So <laughs> I hope it is clear now that. Uh, Stream plots are actually useful to um, understand the general behavior of uh, the solutions of a nonlinear system. But of course, the powerfulness of this approach is limited because we can't always understand uh, something about the stability of the equilibria. For example, if we consider this case here, we know that the solutions are oscillating, but we can't say anything of the, on the stability of this equilibrium because we could have that the solutions here are uh, spiraling towards the equilibrium. We could have that the solutions are spiraling away from the equilibrium. 
or we could have any kind of behavior. So in this case, we can say anything uh, about uh, the stability of the equilibrium. So um, how we can study in general the uh, stability of equilibria in nonlinear system? There are two main tools that can be used uh, in this direction, which are uh, Lyapunov functions and spectral analysis, which is also known as lin sim simply uh, linearization. Now, is anything clear up to now? Okay, so uh, before I go on and I talk about how to use um, the Apuno function, I want to uh, introduce the formal version of the definitions that I, I, I have given you before about uh, stable and unstable equilibrium. So, we consider a generic uh, nonlinear differential equation and assume that we know x star is an equilibrium. Now, using the language of mathematician, now I am not a mathematician, so I won't be uh, very formal, but I just want you to, to, to let you know how the formal definition of stability is. So this uh, equilibrium uh, in the language of mathematician is said to be stable if for every neighborhood A of x star, there is a neighborhood B in A, such that the solution starting from points in B will always remain in A. Now, this is just the formal way to say what I told you before, which means that an equilibrium is stable if every solution starting close to it always remain close to it, where the notion of closeness in the language of mathematicians is given by uh, the use of neighborhoods. So let me show you graphically because I think mm, it's easier to understand this way. Now, assume we have an equilibrium here. Now, this equilibrium will be stable if for every choice that we can make of a neighborhood A, so a set on the state space that contains this point, we can always, always find a smaller set B. And if we pick any point inside here and we use it as the initial condition of our nonlinear system, the solution starting from here will, it can move around all it wants, but it will never go out of A. So it will always remains close to the equilibrium in this sense. Now, if this is true, uh, I, I, I want to introduce a couple of, um, of other definitions of stability, because I mean, I, I, this way we can build this vocabulary that will be useful uh, throughout this school. Now, if this definition of stability is true, not only, let's say in the future, so looking at how the um, solution behaves uh, for positive time, but if this is true also for negative time, uh, we say that this equilibrium here is not, not only stable, but stable at all times. On the other hand, if uh, this solution here, instead of going around this uh, set A here, at a certain point, it moves toward the equilibrium. So if the limit of the solutions is the equilibrium, we say that the equilibrium is asymptotically stable. So the difference between an, a simply stable equilibrium and an asymptotically stable equilibrium is that in, in the asymptotically stable equilibrium, we know that the solutions are moving towards the equilibrium. While if an equilibrium is simply stable, this doesn't necessarily uh, happen. Is this clear? Are there questions? Okay. So the other side of the coin is instability. So again, using the language of mathematician, an equilibrium is said to be unstable if it is not stable. So if we can find at least one neighborhood of X star such that for any choice of a smaller neighborhood, neighborhood there is always at least one initial condition such that, such that its solution goes out of A. Which again, is so just the... Question, yes? Leonardo. Yes? So, Shamolina, sorry for misspelling the name. You have, the, you have raised the... Yeah. Answer. Yeah, I have a question. I could not understand the difference between asymptotically stable and normal stable equilibrium. Yeah, of course. Uh, the, the difference uh, basically is in the fact that if an equilibrium is asymptotically stable, it means mm -hmm. that we know that the solution is actually going towards the equilibrium. Yes. While if an, an equilibrium is just stable, so not, not as stable, but not asymptotically stable, uh, then the solution is not going towards the equilibrium. It can be oscillating, it can be going around uh, the equilibrium, but it's not actually going towards the equilibrium. 
then why you are calling it stable if you don't know its fate i mean uh, ultimately when it will go towards that equilibrium then we can call it stable right yeah, then yeah. in what sense you are calling it stable yeah be, be, i'm calling it stable in the sense that the solution is not going away from the equilibrium so the idea of a stable equilibrium is an equilibrium where the solutions are always remaining close to it if on top of remaining close to it the solutions are actually moving towards the equilibrium then we call the equilibrium asymptotically stable does that answer your question? No, I I actually don't know that how could I differentiate this. Say if I have a uh, equations, uh, say a set of dynamical equations, and then I solve that, and say after a long period of time, my simulation shows that it is approaching to equilibrium, yeah. then it's asymptotically stable. But yes. how could I know from the graphical simulation that it is stable? Because in my system, I don't know where is the boundary of this B and A thing. This is mathematical definition. Yes. Yes. In, in, in this case, I mean, of course, in the, it depends on the system you're considering. But I would say that you could uh, see if the equilibrium is actually stable by using different initial conditions. So if uh, I don't know. Mm, you uh, you guess, for example, from your simulations that uh, X star here has a particular value. You start sampling some solutions uh, uh, around this value. So, for example, if we have just to, um, just to make things simpler, if we are in one dimension, let's say you you guess from your simulation that X uh, is uh, more or less equal to one. Then you could take, uh, you could sample several points uh, uh, around one. So I don't know, 0 0.75, 0 0.80, 0 0.85, then mm -hmm. 1.05, 1.10, and mm -hmm. see how these uh, solutions behave. If you see, for like, example, uh, like starting from those initial conditions, yes, how exactly. that? Exactly. You take like I don't know, four, five, ten points uh, close to the equilibrium, and you see how the solutions starting from these points uh, behave. If you see, for example, that all of them are going towards the equilibrium, then you have a good indication of the fact that the equilibrium is asymptotically stable. So if you going see, towards the equilibrium means like how long time or there is no time sense here? In uh, the no, in, the, in this case, there is, no, um, there is no time scale here. I mean, the mathematical requirement is that for T going to infinity, the, the solutions goes to, to the equilibrium. So you don't have uh, any kind of measure in in in, in this sense. Oh, what then we it? have always played to the asymptotically stable thing. We cannot. Sorry? That means we always see the asymptotically stable equilibrium, never the stable. Equilibrium. No, it, it, it depends. I'm going to show you some examples uh, uh, in in this tutorial. But for example, if we have a, an oscillating system, so for example, if we have. Uh, Okay, so if we have, for example, I mean, I will show you the Lotka Volterra uh, system, or for example, a pendulum. So assume this. Is uh, excuse me. Yes. Leonardo, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, so, um, and the last slide, can I go back to it? Yes. Um, yeah, so you have written uh, X star is stable not only for all t greater than or equal to zero, yes. but. Uh, for all t included in r right yes. but it time for the, for the sake of its definition it is supposed to be uh, contained in r plus right uh, yeah yes i mean physically yes mathematically not necessarily meaning that uh, i mean if you let me write it this way if you have a system like this so x uh, x of t sorry x of t equal to f of x of t Yes, you would, uh, you would say that I can uh, solve this for t uh, greater or uh, uh, larger than zero. But then I could uh, uh, define, the, I don't know, tau equal to minus t and solve uh, this system here, x of tau equal to f of x of tau. This is another uh, uh, nonlinear differential equation which can be solved. But when tau here is larger than zero, t is lower than zero. I don't know if I'm being uh, clear enough. 
So it is supposed to be, it is supposed to be a transformation on T, but T itself yes. cannot be negative. Yes, if, if, if you want, I mean, mathematically, yes. If you want, we I can I can change what I'm saying here by exactly what I've drawn, uh, what I've written here. So if yeah. you if you can say that the equilibrium is stable for t larger than zero, and then it is also stable if you make this change of variables, mm -hmm. then it is stable at all times. Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. So about what the the, the question I was answering before. Uh, so for example, if we have a, this is our system, this is our uh, uh, equilibrium. So for example, if we have uh, a solution that goes in circles like this, this is, for example, what happens for the pendulum equation uh, when we approximate it for very, small, uh, for very small angles. So you see that in this case, the solution is uh, going around the equilibrium, but is never going close to it or far from it. So in this case, the equilibrium is not asymptotically stable. Because the solution is oh, not okay, okay. Now so the I understand. The solution, this is a periodic solution. orbit. Yeah. yeah, because the solution is not doing something like that. So mm -hmm. the, the, the equilibrium is not asymptotically stable, but yeah. still the solution is not going away from the equilibrium. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, is that clear? Yeah. Thank okay. you. So just another fact, Leonardo. Yes, yes. So uh, actually uh, in the linear stability analysis, you are always uh, constrained to near about these uh, stable states, stable or yes. unstable states. Yes. Never, yes. never far from it. And yes. then you have to invoke this large deviation, right? So it Sorry? has to be always. Then you have to invoke. If you far enough, you have to invoke large deviation. Uh, yes. I mean, it, it depends on the system you are studying, but I'm going to show you to to show you something about it. But please continue. Please. Uh, so, uh, so again. Um, all the time, whenever you are applying these analytical results to conclude something, yes. you are yes. again very close, close enough to your uh, steady states. Yes. So this uh, this uh, asymptotically stable asymptotic stability always matters. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Thank I mean, this, this is also this is also the um, we can say the prey that the price that we have to pay for not being able to solve the equations analytically in general. So of course, it, if we would be able to solve uh, analytically on uh, nonlinear differential equations, we would say we would uh, be able to say everything uh, globally, basically, about an equilibrium. But since we cannot do that, we have to restrict ourselves to the points of the state space which are close to the equilibrium. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Please okay. go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So I was saying the other side of the coin is instability. So uh, graphically, what happens is what I was saying before. So an, an equilibrium will be unstable if uh, I can find some uh, initial conditions for which the solutions will eventually uh, go away from the equilibrium. When in this case, in this case, go away is uh, the idea of going away is given by uh, neighborhoods. So uh, if there are no further questions, what time is it? Okay, so we still have 10 minutes, more or less. Yes. More or less. If there are no other questions, okay, I can start introducing uh, uh, Lyapuno functions. So, okay. Now, one of the um, tools that I have anticipated you, we can use to study the stability of um, equilibria in a linear system are Lyapuno functions. So let me show you the basic principle that is behind using the Apuno function so that the things will be more clear. So let's assume we have a system like this, a nonlinear system, and we know that X star is an equilibrium. Now here I am drawing, drawing this in one dimension simply because it's easier, but what I'm saying is true in any number of dimension. So assume now that we are somehow able uh, I'm going to, to, to explain you how we can be able to do so uh, in a few slides, but assume we are able to define in a neighborhood of this point a function w that has a minimum in x star in, in the equilibrium. Now, if we had uh, the uh, solutions of the uh, system and we computed the value of this function along the trajectories of the system, for example, we could find out that this function is decreasing along the trajectories. So for example, we would be in a situation like this. So again, we 
let me repeat, we define this function here uh, in, uh, in the proximity of an equilibrium. Then we take the trajectories of the system and we compute the, this function along the trajectories. I'm going to explain you, of course, how, how we can do that. If, for example, we find out that this function is decreasing along the trajectories, so the, deriva the time derivative of this function here is negative, then we will be in a situation like this. So you see that necessarily this means that our solutions are moving towards the equilibrium. And this, this, and this happens because we know that the function here has a minimum in X star. So this would mean in this case that the equilibrium of the system here is asymptotically stable because we know that the solutions are going towards it. On the other hand, if for example, we find out that uh, this function here is increasing along the trajectory. So if the time derivative of this function is uh, strictly positive, then we are in a situation like this. And so you see that in this case, necessarily the solutions are going away from uh, the equilibrium. So in this case, we could say that this equilibrium is unstable. Is that clear? Okay. So uh, now what I've... Uh, Yes. The question by Ngaka. Hello. Are you approaching from just one side? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, of course, I'm showing you just from one side. But I mean, um, if you flip this image vertically, you see that the, the same is true uh, also from the other side. If if you are in this situation, oh, sorry. If you are in this situation, so if the solutions are decreasing, sorry, if the value of the function is decreasing, you see that if I started here, let me draw that, probably this will be a little bit clearer. So if this is my situation, this is my equilibrium X star. So let's say that I can define this function here. Let me draw it a little bit better. So you see that if I start here, for example, and I find out that the uh, value of the function is decreasing along the trajectories, then I will have exactly the same situation. So the solution will be approaching the uh, equilibrium from the other side. Does that answer your, your question? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So, uh, okay. So what I've told you now is absolutely non-rigorous. Uh, I mean, what I've said, of course, can be made uh, mathematically rigorous. And this is done by uh, what is called the Lyapunov's second theorem. This theorem basically states that if we are exactly in the situation that I have just described, so a general nonlinear system with an equilibrium and this function defined here with a minimum in the equilibrium, then if the time derivative of this function along the trajectories is equal to zero, the theorem says that X star, the equilibrium will be stable at all times. So if this function here is constant along the trajectories, this equilibrium is stable at all times. On the other hand, if the time derivative is non-positive, so is either negative or equal to zero, the equilibrium is stable. If it is strictly, strictly negative, sorry, the equilibrium is asymptotically stable. And if it is strictly positive, the equilibrium is unstable. Finally, a function that I have, uh, in, I mean, a function like this that I have just introduced is simply called the Lyapunov function for this equilibrium. Now, we still have uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, more or less. It's about 10 minutes. So, okay. I, think I mean, perhaps we can. Uh... Uh, see if uh, there are more questions from this. Yeah, absolutely, audience. absolutely. I mean, it depends on whether, because uh, Leonardo is giving a second part of uh, this tutorial tomorrow, so it yeah. also depends, Leonardo, on whether you want to, how you want to divide it into parts. But I would say, let's see if... Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, 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 can, I can stop here, no problem. Okay. Um, so are there questions, clarifications, uh, something that is uh, unclear? Uh, Well, so I have one question. Yes. Yes, please. Yeah, my question is that in this case, the equilibrium is the minimum. Is the, yes. this property uh, still true for when we have uh, an equilibrium which is uh, a maximum? 
Uh, yes, I mean you could you could uh, write basically the same uh, exact theorem uh, when the function has a maximum uh, in the equilibrium instead of a minimum. Of course, you would have to change uh, the the names here because for because of course if here we have a function with a minimum in the equilibrium and we find for example that the time derivative is negative, then we are moving. Let me draw this. Sorry, probably this will be uh, more clear. So what I've just told you in the slides is basically that if we are in this situation, so I have my equilibrium and I have this function here with a minimum. So what I've shown you in this case is that if the, um, the function decreases uh, along the trajectories, then we are moving uh, towards the equilibrium. So the equilibrium is asymptotically stable. But for example, if we decided to define the Thing, the function differently. So instead of having, uh, sorry, a minimum in the equilibrium, it had a maximum. Sorry. Okay. So the situation looks a little bit like this. You see that the equilibrium in this case would be asymptotically stable only if the value of the function increases along the trajectories. Because in this case, we would have that the function is increasing like this. And so we are actually moving uh, towards the equilibrium. So yes, we could very well do the exact same thing with a function that has a maximum on the equilibrium, provided that we change the definitions here accordingly. Is that clear? Uh, Mamad, is it clear the question, the answer? Yeah, it is clear, it is clear. Then there is a question from uh, Juan Jose. Please uh, unmute yourself. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you if we are, when we are looking for an attractor of a chaotic system, uh, is there a, around those trajectories that are closed in a, in, in a kind of uh, space near the equilibrium points? Mm -hmm. uh, there are we talking about the same um, notion of equilibrium uh, or or is or it's a bit different you know it's uh, I would say that it is similar but uh, the notion of attractor is actually wider let's say than simple equilibrium because by equilibrium we mean a point a specific point in uh, in the state space while an attractor can be, uh, something more. For, I mean, it can be also uh, a different set because, for example, I don't know if you have ever heard of uh, cycle limits, limit cycles, sorry, but there are some uh, dynamical systems, uh, for example, where we find out that there is, I mean, I'm just showing an example, there is, for example, this circumference and any solution that starts, for example, here, instead of tending towards a particular point, uh, it will tend towards this trajectory. So the, the solution will do something like this. Sorry, I, I am terrible at drawing, but uh, the idea is that the solution, instead of uh, going towards a particular point, it goes towards uh, a trajectory. Now, the intuitive idea is the same. So if we have that the solution instead is, instead of tending towards a point, it tends towards a trajectory. I mean, the idea is the same, but mathematically these things are uh, very different. And there are there is a whole different set of tools that can be used to, to study them. Oh, thank you very much. No problem. The second in line for asking a question was uh, Ayan. Ayan. Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, uh, yes, I can hear you. So I was just wondering if we, if we uh, go back from dynamical systems theory to uh, study ecological networks, the concept yes. of uh, equilibrium and steady state. So equi non equilibrium is something when you have this exchange of energy, right? Yes. So yes. then, the, which I guess is uh, always the case in ecological networks. So the proper terminology over there maybe is to use steady states or unsteady state, unstable st steady states uh, rather than using these equilibrium states. 
Yes, when we talk about uh, thermodynamically open systems, let's say, so systems where there is an input of matter or energy or uh, any, any kind of thermodynamic quantities like ecosystems, technically we should say steady states and not really equilibrium because the, there is no uh, equilibrium. Yes, so you, you are right. Thank you. Okay, uh, there was another question by Pablo uh, Lechon. Mm -hmm. Um, hello. So, but when you're talking about um, not being able to solve the linear system, and then you, you, in order for you to um, talk about stability, you have to talk about stability in a region near equilibrium. Yes. Why is that? Is that because if you don't know how to solve the system, would you linearize it around the equilibrium or? Yes, exactly. I mean, if, if you don't, I mean, if we would know the uh, full analytical solution, like in the, in the case I've shown you a few slides ago on the uh, logistic equation, so if we could find the analytic solution like this, like this here, we could say anything that we can say uh, about the system. We have like the maximum information possible on, uh, on the system. But when this is not possible, and, and this is not possible almost always, basically, we have to find ways to determine the maximal uh, information, which necessarily cannot be the maximum inform information because we cannot solve the system. So we have to do our best. And often doing our best is studying the system close to equilibria. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. No problem. Uh, great. Next uh, in line is uh, Deba Smita. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so my question is that uh, construction uh, of this Lyapunov function, like whenever we change the model, so there I face uh, problem with construction of Lyapunov function. So can you suggest some techniques that uh, some base techniques to assume what kind of Lyapunov function we can assume for to face the uh, stability of a particular so, so, Sorry, I lost the audio for a moment. Can you repeat the question? I, I, yeah, I, so I'm asking about construction of the Lyapunov yeah. function for yes. any system. Yeah, I mean, the, the, this is the great uh, problem of this approach. I mean, I'm, uh, as you can see, it's actually very powerful because it can tell us a lot about an equilibrium. But the problem of this approach is exactly building a Lyapunov function. In general, it is not easy uh, at all to find Lyapunov function for any generic system. So we have to be either lucky or we have to use some intuition to build the Lyapunov function. So there is always this kind of trade-off. So we have a very powerful uh, tool, but this powerful tool is not easy to use and it's not um, possible to use it always. Okay. Thank you. Was, okay. Sorry, you were saying something? There was Mita? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So then there was a question by uh, Samson, what I need. All right. Uh, Thank you very much for giving me opportunity to ask my question. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate the uh, presenter for this wonderful presentation. Thank you. Uh, my question goes straight like this. When can we have a situation of a global asymptotic stability? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I, I don't think I, I heard uh, correctly because of uh, some audio problems. What, what was your question? I'm talking about, um, my question is, uh, is, is uh, tending towards when are we going to have a situation of global asymptotic stability? Oh, uh, well, it, it depends. A case when we can say globally that uh, an equilibrium is asymptotically stable, for example, uh, are uh, um, systems with conserved quantities, for example. Uh, if we have a particle in a potential, so a very simple uh, physical system, this particle can move only on the x-axis. And we know that this is subject to a given potential, uh, energy potential V. And for example, we know that this potential, for example, is a parabola. So this is defined on all the x-axis. So we know uh, globally how the potential work. We know that, I mean, from physics, we know that the equilibrium, uh, the equilibria of this system are the minima of the uh, energy potential. So in this case, since this is a parabola, we only have a minimum. 
And so in this case, we can say, okay, there is one asymptotically stable equilibrium, and this is the only one that, that there is in the system. So, in, I mean, this is a lucky case in which we can tell anything about the system globally and not only locally. Did that answer my question? Oh, Your question. Uh, uh, thank you. Yes? I think uh, that was right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. Oh, okay, thank you. So there was, um, okay. so there is a, a question which is uh, quite popular in the chat, and I think it could be the last question of today's session. Uh, so the question is, is there any general principle guiding us to the construction of a Lyapunov function? No, this is the great problem of this, of this approach. There is no general principle. We have to be lucky or smart. Uh, the, I mean, there is one, one big exception. I'm going to talk about this uh, tomorrow, but if we know, for example, that we have a system with a conserved quantity, so if we, for any reason, know that uh, there is, like, like I've shown you before, potential energy or any kind of quantity that is conserved, Generally, mm, these qu conserved quantities are a good first guess for a, for a Lyapunov function. This is not always true. We have every time we have to check that, that they are a good Lyapunov functions. But generally, when we have conserved quantities, these are good. These can be good Lyapunov functions. If we don't have conserved quantities, then we are completely on our own and we have to, to, to find them on our, 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 on our own, which can be uh, difficult or even uh, outright impossible in some cases. Okay, um, great. So I would say that this is the perfect time, the end of the uh, today's uh, session, today's tutorial. So um, as a, uh, as a uh, reminder, Leonardo will give uh, the second part of this tutorial tomorrow at the same time. Um, so uh, you can also watch again uh, two or three times, I mean, as many times as you want, the, the tutorial that Leonardo gave today on YouTube. So if you want to, some, you miss something and you want to watch it again, please do. So the next uh, uh, slot in the next uh, lecture by Joshua Weitz is starting in about 13 minutes. So what we're going to do now is to uh, split in a randomly assigned uh, breaking rooms. Uh, you are free to stay in the breaking rooms, uh, chat with whoever you are assigned randomly to. You are also, you should be able to switch uh, the, uh, the breaking rooms. If you, to switch a room, if you, if you see someone you want to say hi. Uh, I guess Leonardo is staying with us, so you can also. Yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> more informally. And, uh, but also you are free, of course, to stretch your legs, to get a cup of coffee or uh, take a break from the video. So uh, with that, if I, since I'm not host, if uh, um, I'm ready. Okay, yes, I give you, please. Here we go. Yes. Okay, 20 breakout rooms, is it okay? Yes, okay. Just 150 people. Yes. Okay. okay.
Captain, someone on the ICTP side, if you can hear me, let me know. Uh, yes, I have answered you in the chat. So your sharing is good. Okay. I can see your sharing very good. So it's okay. I just re remember you that uh, remind that we are uh, now live on streaming. Yeah, no, I understand. Okay. On streaming. That's Hello, all. streaming people. Yeah, perfectly. Great. Hello, you need help? Yeah, I don't know how to switch these breakout rooms. I mean, you... there is only one uh, breakout room, that is room number 15, where I am assigned. But can I switch the rooms or can I see the available rooms? Uh, you can leave the room. And then I am going back to the main session, but I cannot see the other rooms or... If you like... want, I can move you. Ah, you do you have a, a bottom breakout room on the bottom of your bar bottom bar no. it maybe depends on the version of your zoom is after five you have to go at least version number five i, I don't know what is this zoom version number. do you want that i move you in another Yes, actually, I want to ask a question to the person who was giving lecture. I think he's out of the breakout room, so just leave the room. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll just say uh, that I'm using... Uh... Leave breakout room, just don't. Mm -hmm. Hey, Josh, can you hear me? Hi. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, great. Okay, so I was, uh, because we have the participants uh, uh, paired uh, randomly in, group randomly in meeting rooms, so I was in one of those. Okay, uh, that's fine. To find you. So how is it going? It's going fine. You have a big crowd. I think we're live on streaming, so. Okay. Just, oh. Yeah, just keep, keep that in mind. Hello, okay. everyone who's watching us have this chit chat. I see. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to discuss anything before we start, we can go to a breakout room. But otherwise, yeah, right. I Time think I'm set. And I have... yeah. I'll leave with you your coffee. I think you'll check everything. Okay, great. Thanks.